just join us Let's 
without you Lord it's nothing I need you this time how many of you are ready for the word on this evening uh, we have a very very capable minister with us this evening a man who's served diligently with the young people in instituting the uh, youth Bible class for many many years and we just appreciate him and he's always available to help the young people so I do appreciate him but this time we give you elder Rudy Roussel, saying, preach the word, Elder Roussel. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his course with praise. <laughs> I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Ooh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Praise the Lord to everybody. Praise the Lord to everybody. All right, the theme tonight is about praise, and it was certainly a really, really, really nice to see the young folks praising the Lord, singing, lifting up songs, their voices, and songs to Zion. It's a real treat to see them doing that. I like to see them when, when they raise their hands like that. You know, when they lift up their arms and their hearts are sincere, and they're giving God glory, giving God the praise. It's better than having the police tell them stick them up. They could be someplace else doing a whole lot of other things. I would rather train them up in here, you know, and show them the way to go. And rather than have to worry about the police shooting them later on sometime. Certainly we give honor to God tonight. My pastor, Bishop Bowers, and his wife, Brother Mike Posey, and his very capable staff for being here once again tonight to, uh, you know, just share a little bit of the word of the Lord with you. Uh, tonight, if you were wondering why the lights were on, is that we're taping this part of the program, well, all of the program, and we're going to kind of divide it up some kind of way. The technicians and the engineers, all the brothers upstairs, they'll figure out how they'll do that. But we wanted it to be a part of the Reaching Out program. So, you know, we want the folks in the community and the neighborhood to see what our young people are doing. You know, everybody, that, you know, uh, that, that, that's in church, I mean, outside of church, all the children, you know, they ain't out stealing and robbing and selling crack and doing nothing. They're praising God. They're saved, baptized in Jesus' name, and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, uh, Brother Bobby and Brother uh, uh, George Cummins tonight thought it would be an excellent idea, opportunity to videotape this program. So one day, next week or the week after, the kids can tune in and they can see themselves singing and lifting up the name of Jesus. Also, I'd like to honor my wife tonight who is in service with my grandkids who are somewhere running around. <laughs> tonight, for a little while, if you have your Bibles handy, turn with me to the 38th chapter of the book of Isaiah. And I will just read uh, three passages of scripture, well, four. 
in that 38th chapter. And when you got it, just say amen. Starting at verse number 17, he says, Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee, they that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing my songs to the string instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. And the thought today comes or tonight, rather, from verse number 19. The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known thy truth. And quite simply, the message tonight is praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody is praising the Lord. People before, you, you, you see them in the grocery stores, and some folk that you know not even saved. You can call their house, you leave a message if they're not home on the answering machine, and you know these bit more folks ain't bit more saved than the man in the moon. And the last part of that message would be, have a blessed day. You see people's in the super, see people in the supermarket or, or, or in, the, in the shopping malls, how you doing? Have a blessed day. Smell like alcohol, doing things that they ain't got no business doing. But everybody is jumping on board. Everybody wants to praise the Lord. But the thing in part here, he said that the, the fathers to the children will make that truth known. And the truth of the matter is that those that are baptized in the name of Jesus, those that are filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, those of them that have the truth of the gospel according to Jesus Christ, the saints of God are the ones that really know how to praise the Lord. We greet each other when we come in the building. We say, praise the Lord. How are you? God bless you. Nice to see you. Praise the Lord when we see saints out and about. Praise the Lord. When I went home to visit my mother, and uh, she's not doing very well, you know. Uh, she has a, been had a feeding tube in for like seven weeks. And uh, I went down and prayed with her, you know, and my family and everybody was there. And uh, nobody knew when they were going to remove the tube so that she could get back on solid food. She had not uh, developed physically. You know, the healing process was a bit slow. And uh, I just said, well, we'll pray about it, you know, and we kept praying and praying, and, you know, and uh, finally the next day we went back to the doctors, and I was, I was in the, the office, uh, you know, and, and after I was in the office and went back to visit my mom, uh, she said, well, you know something, that they ordered some food today, you know, and as insignificant as that might seem, seven weeks of no food, no nourishment, they finally decided to order some food. Now, to some people, that might not be nothing. You know, they may look at that in the natural sense, like, well, she developed this, so the doctor saw fit to do that. But I thank God that he was able to do that. See, because God is still in control of the affairs of men. And he is worthy to be praised. A lot of times we take God for the advantage of God or we take him for granted. We, we are not mindful of the little things that God does for him. We get out of bed in the morning and we swing our feet on the floor and we stand up and we get ready to go to work. But I'm reminded of the story about the man who wanted a pair of alligator shoes until he realized there was a fella that didn't have no feet. We have a lot to be thankful about. We have a lot to be grateful about. We can always Lift up the name of Jesus and, and praise the Lord. Mr. Webster says that praise is the act of expressing approval or admiration. The offering of grateful homage in words or song as in an act of worship to God. He says to applaud, to glorify, to honor, and to exalt. Well, when we serve a God like the one we serve, you don't have no choice to, but to worship and to serve him and to honor him for the mighty acts that he has done in our lives. God has done some miraculous things for us. I was outside the other day, and we were talking about the children and the young people, but I, I was, my children and my grandkids were outside the other night. 
And, and right before they came in, my wife and I were in the back room. And the little boy, he came running through the house. He said, I was outside. Did you hear me? And I said, no, son, I didn't hear you. My grandmother and I, his grandmother and I were just standing there. And I said, son, is it, what, what, what's wrong? He said, I was out there praising God and preaching. I said, you were preaching? He said, yeah, Juan was saying the prayer, and I was doing the praise and the preaching. I said, you was? He said, yeah, I was preaching like the bishop, and I was preaching real hard. So about two days later, I said, son, I've been thinking about what you told me. I said, what was you preaching? He said, well, the Lord told Elder Daniels. And I said, uh-huh. He said, and Elder Daniel told Sister Daniel. I said, uh-huh. He said, and Sister Daniel told Sister Bishop, and Sister Bishop told the big bishop, and the bishop told me that Jesus is God. Now, I'm saying to myself, here's a child that got sickle cell disease. They said there's no cure and there's no hope. He's going to have this all of his life. He's been with us four years. He has never had an incident. He's never had a cold or fever that requires him to be hospitalized. He has never had the life squad been called to the house. He has never had an issue in the school. He has never, ever been overcome by the disease. Who wouldn't praise a God like that? Who wouldn't glorify a God like that? Men can do great things, but it's still God that promotes the healing. If God doesn't do it, <laughs> nobody else can. He says, I can do all things. There's nothing too impossible for God. But we forget about those things, even the little things. Lord, I thank you for food. I thank you for shelter. I thank you for clothing. I thank you, Lord, for just allowing me another opportunity to get up this morning. I thank you for the job. Lord, I thank you for all these things, for the simple things, the provisions that you have provided for me. Now, a lot of times we'd be wondering why God has not blessed us to the max. It's because we don't accept and are grateful for the little things first. He said, if you're faithful over a few things, you know what he'll do. In this particular book, Hezekiah, laying on his deathbed, he said, and in those days, Hezekiah was sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet came to him. And he said, the Lord said, set thy house in order. He says, for thou shalt die and not live. And a lot of times in life, we are concerned with situations like that, where we have been told some bad news or have gotten a bad report from the doctors. And sometimes we go home and we think about these things and we think upon these things and we forget about Jesus. We just think about the outcome of what the doctors has told us. We think about the outcome of what some attorney has told us. We're thinking about the outcome that you might get laid off on your job in a couple of weeks. We things but we never realize that God is still in control so when push come to a shove finally you realize the light bulb goes off in your head and you say Lord I need you to intervene in this situation Hezekiah the Bible said he prayed and he petitioned the Lord and sometimes we go through and we keep going through the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers us out of them all the psalmist said, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. So when you look to the Lord, you can expect God to move in your behalf. So the Lord said, I heard his cry. He said, tell him I'm going to save him and the city. I'm going to deliver both of them. God can sometimes, even at your lowest point, if it is his will to show something miraculous, something that will set you on fire, something that will not, you will not be able to contain within yourself, you will have to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. The Lord said, they were looking. He said, well, what sign shall I look for? What, 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 what shall I look for? And folks in the world, that's what they do. 
They go running, looking for signs. There's some denomination of people every year, they go down to Kentucky and look for a great apparition of Mary on the side of a barn. And they go down there and they worship and they pray in front of this enigma or, 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 or this sign of Mary. But ain't no salvation in Mary. Mary had to have the Holy Ghost just like we did. But believers do not follow after signs. Signs follow after the believer. The Lord himself, the Bible says he turned time back. Tenth of a degree. I don't know how much that is, but it has to do with the rotation of the earth and time. Now, in a natural sense, that would upset everything if the world stopped turning on its axis and started turning the opposite way. It turns 15 degrees every hour. Controls times, the waves, the weather patterns, and everything else. And science would have a way of explaining that situation. But back then, there were no scientists. God said, I will do it. accepted it. He turned time back for Hezekiah. He did the same for Joshua. He turned back time. How much more would God do for him and them that love him and worship him and praise him? He has to do that for you. The scripture says, but the living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The living, the dead can you offer up no praise to God. When I was dead in my sins, I never thought anything about God. All I thought about was the things that the world had to offer and my favorite libations on weekends. Could not praise God. I didn't think about him. But one day when I came up in here, got baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, all those things changed. I couldn't stop talking about Jesus. I couldn't stop but praising Jesus. I couldn't stop because it was the best thing that had ever happened to me. I couldn't explain it. All I knew is that I felt better and that what I had received was better than what was going on in the world. When I went home, I showed my brother some of the videos. I gave some of them out to people because I, I, I knew that I, need, I wanted my family to know what it's like to worship and to serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Elder Daniels told me years ago, he said, they think you're crazy, but it's going to be you that's going to help them get delivered. So I left these tapes to the bishop, and I left some of, some of the reaching out programs. On one of the tapes, Eric and the young people were in charge of the service. And Eric and Danzel, I mean, they were having a high time in Jesus. And my brother and my sister and them act like they had never seen young people like that before. They said, I can't, I can't, I can't believe that. I said, you're watching it. I, I mean, he, how old is he? I said, I don't know, 13, 12, something like that. And he's shouting all over the church like that. I said, yeah. You don't know what God has done in the lives of these children that caused them to shout. Kids got problems. Kids got issues outside the confines of this church. The idea is to help put the word down in their hearts. The Bible said, thy word, O Lord, is already settled in heaven. So we're to help them get to where they need to be in heavenly places. So when they're out of here, they know how to handle themselves. He said, the fathers shall make known that truth. Could you imagine how I felt when the little boy told me I've been praising him and preaching him? I said, Lord, something about what he's seen in this house is helping him. Thank God I don't smoke no more. Thank God I don't drink because they'll pick that up. Thank God we talk about the name of Jesus. Thank God he blesses his food. Thank God he has the strength and the courage to continue in spite of his physical condition. The Lord is helping them. He is helping all of us. But all he requires is us to praise him, is to lift him up. I am not ashamed of the Jesus. I am not ashamed of the Lord. I say grace at work when I'm over my food. I don't know what the people do in the cafeteria. You better bless your food. You don't know what's going on in Kroger's. Before your wife or your husband prepare that meal, pray. And your children, they watch you. And they'll incorporate the same thing you do in their lives. And they'll pray. And folks will see them praying. And their friends will see them praying. And they'll start praying. We are the lights of the world. It is the saints. The Bible says the